Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to check the iFlight Nazgul 5 5 inch racing quadcopter. In this video I'm going to quickly go over its features and specs, show you how to set it up and then head outdoors and test it out. The Nazgul 5 is available in two versions, one with 6S compatible motors which is the one I have and you can also get a version with 4S compatible motors. In addition you can also get it in both bind and fly and plug and play versions the plug and play version of course doesn't come with a receiver so you will have to add your own one and the bind and fly version is available with either FR Sky RXSR or FR Sky XM Plus receivers. Here is everything you can find inside the box of the Nazgul 5. So first of all you're getting some stickers, a noise the control board for configuring the Cadix Rotel camera, plenty of extra screws, two iFlight branded high quality battery velcro straps, two sets of iFlight Nazgul 5140 propellers, two anti-skid battery pads for the top plate, one is made out of rubber and the second one is made out of foam. Last but definitely not least, you are also getting the quadcopter. In case you are getting the bind and fly version, basically all you have to do is to bind the receiver, make sure that everything is configured properly on your sticks and mods on Betaflight, attach the propellers and the battery velcro strap and then you are pretty much ready to go. In terms of specs, the Nazgul 5 is using the Zing E2207 motors. The only difference between the 4S and the 6S version is the KV of the motor. The 6S version is bundled with the 1700 KV version, although this is probably an early version and I've got the 1800 KV motors, and the 4S version is bundled with the 2750 KV motors. In the center of the quadcopter, on the bottom of the stack, you can find a 45 ampere BLLES 4-in-1 ESC. On top of it, an FO flight controller, which came pre-flashed with Betaflight 4.04, and on top of it, a 48 channels VTX that supports IOC Trump protocol and has a selectable output strength of 0, 25, and 600 milliwatts. The VTX features an MM6 antenna connector, which is connected using an adapter to an SMA connector on the back. Along with the quadcopter, you're also getting this very durable looking RCP antenna which you can easily connect the SM antenna connector using this 3D printed part. Finally, on the front of the quadcopter, you can find the excellent Cadex Rotel FED camera. In addition, the quadcopter comes with plenty of pre-assembled 3D printed parts that are going to protect the motors and the frame. The wheelbase of the frame is 227 mm, it features a true X pattern and it uses replaceable arms with a thickness of 5 mm. The thickness of the bottom and the top plate is 1.8 mm and the weight of the Nazgul 5 is 364.5 grams. In order to bind the FRSky bind and fly versions, you'll need to power up the quadcopter while pressing the bind button on the receiver which is located on the back over here. Then you need to head over to your model menu on your FRSky compatible transmitter, select mode D16 and hit the bind button. In case this is going to be your first quadcopter, you should note that when configuring the quadcopter on your bench, always remove the propellers because things can go wrong. After successfully binding the receiver, you'll need to configure the flight controller using Betaflight. So you'll have to connect the flight controller to your computer using the micro USB port. The receiver is not going to power up and you'll need to connect the battery and before that make sure of course that the props are off and also that the FEV antenna is connected because otherwise you're going to burn the VTX. Now the quadcopter is powered up and the receiver is on and I highly recommend to set the VTX output power to 25 milliwatts because you don't want to fry it and on Betaflight what you can do is to set the VTX low power this arm either to on or to until first arm. If it's going to be set to on the VTX is going to be set to the lowest output power which is 25 milliwatts in the case of this VTX and if it's going to be set to until first arm it's going to be set to 25 milliwatts until you're going to arm the quadcopter for the first time. So after entering this command hit enter, type save and hit enter again and now the settings were saved. Then you have to go to the receiver tab on Betaflight, move the sticks around and make sure that everything works properly so throttle is throttle, yo is yo and etc. And I also set the RSSI to display on the on-screen display and I have a separate video that shows how to do it. Next you have to go to the mode section, 
configure the modes properly. So I configured an arm switch, all the modes. So we have Horizon on the center, Acro mode, and on the bottom, Air mode with Acro mode. I also configured the beeper and also flip over after crash switch. After you're done configuring your modes, you can disconnect the battery and head over to the OSD tab where you can configure all the elements that are going to be displayed on your on-screen display. That's pretty much everything that you need to configure and I'm also going to include the dump file of Betaflight in the description box of this video so in case you change the setting and you want to revert to the default ones you can simply do it by copying the content of the text file that I'm going to include, paste them in the CLI and then type save and press enter. The next thing that I've done is to head outdoors and test the Nazgul 5 using 4, 5 and 6S Lapa batteries. Overall I can tell you that if you're looking to buy your first 5 inch racing quadcopter and you don't want to build it yourself, this is probably going to be your best option since it's using high quality parts, the frame is durable, it's using replaceable arms and the battery is mounted on the top which are important aspects for beginners since you are going to crash your quadcopter if you are going to fly it. The only two downsides that I found is that the VTX is not that great and you should consider replacing it with a better one later on as you advance and also since the quadcopter is a little bit heavy the flight times are not that great and I got around 5 minutes using a 1300 mAh 4S 1300 mAh battery. Now I'm going to show the flight footage and I also used my GoPro 7 black camera using this mount which is sold separately by iFlight and is pretty much compatible with all of their frames so it mounts on the front like that using these four screws it also comes with a lens protector and it can also get a version that comes with an ND filter and also this adapter the weight of this 3D printed mount is 17.9 grams 19.8 grams including the lens protector and 26.6 grams including the ND filter and this adapter I'm going to include a 10% coupon in the description box of this video, so if you consider getting the iFitness Gold 5, you should definitely check it out. I hope you will enjoy the rest of this video. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you in my next videos and goodbye.